Hello everyone, in this lecture we will learn about uh, how to reverse the given linked list. Now suppose the linked list is given to us like this. A, B and C. And you need to return and you need to reverse this linked list. So by this what we are actually expecting, your answer should be C, B and A. So this is the answer you are expecting and a start should point to this one. Fine. So one of the easiest methods could be to use some other data structure, for example a stack, wherein you store all these information one by one. Okay. You traverse the linked list and store A and then B and then C. Once you're done, once you're done with this storing all these information you pop these values one by one and you store the c at the place of a then you pop one more value you store this b at the place of b and then you again pop this value and you store the, this at the place of a and your reverse will be done okay so let's try to write it so here we are going the doing the reverse the linked list in this reverse the linked list, only thing given to us is the address of the first node. So we are taking from our side a P pointer, which points at the first node, with the help of which I will traverse the linked list. We are going to take a stack also. Let's say stack is there as S, and this stack is initialized to null. Okay, by calling the function initialize S, we are assuming that uh, the uh, a stack will be initialized to contain or to take no values. Okay, it has been initialized to have no values at the beginning. Now we need to traverse the linked list. So while p is not equal to null, I will traverse the linked list. So if I am traversing the linked list, then whatever value is there with the p node will be stored in the stack. So I am calling a push function and the information content of the node is stored there in the stack and then p equals to p dot next having done this once we are done with this loop all the information associated with the linked list will be stored there in the stack and then i will pop the values of a stack one by one so while not empty s i will be popping the values one by one but before that, let us once again reinitialize this p to point to the start node. Okay, p has become null. Now let's say again p to point to the first node. So by p equals to start, it can be done. So while not empty s, what you're doing, you're popping the value of a stack and then you are doing the insertion of this information at the p node so if p is at the first node so first value that you popped let's say that is c is stored as the information of the p node now after this you need to progress this p to point to the next node so p equals to p dot next okay so now p is at this node let's say this part this is p is at this node you will again pop one value and will store the information b here then you will again increment this p to go to the next node the stack is not empty yet so you will pop this value a and you will store it here in this as is as the information of this node okay and then p equals to p dot next now after the removal of this a information the stack becomes null so this condition of the loop has finished Okay, the condition of loop has finished. If you, you can write it here at while not empty as, you can also write here as while p is not null. So both the conditions will work. So the linked list which was given to you has been reversed. So by making use of this stack, you can reverse the given linked list. There can, there can be some other methods also by which you can uh, reverse the given linked list. Let's take that example as well. 
let's say there are four nodes here in the linked list. Okay, so this is the start. If you do not want to make use of this uh, stack, means the other data structure, we can uh, think of uh, what, what we actually, let's say these nodes have no links. Okay, all these nodes have no links. Just think of that, these nodes do not have a link. So if we link this node with this one, means D, D's next pointer points to C and C's next pointer points to B and B's next pointer points to A and the next pointer of uh, or the next field of A is null, is set to null and then start is set to this node, our task will be done because the first node is D, next node is C, next node is B, next node is A. So if we are able to reverse this pointer fields, then also our work will be done. So let us try to think that how will this be done. Let's say we are taking the current node as this one. Okay, and let's take a previous pointer that is P and let's take the next pointer or next field as N. Okay. Now what you need to do, you need to set the uh, next field of uh, this node as this. This is the previous one. So you need to uh, set the next field of this node as P. Okay. So please remember that this P is representing the previous, C is representing the current and N is representing the next node. Okay. So the next field of this node will be pointed to take this value. So what we are doing at the first, if you see the current node is C, the next field of the current node is set to have this P and P is initialized to null. Okay, fine. And after this, what you need to do? You need to go to the next nodes. So P becomes this, C becomes this, and N becomes this node. So this is B, this is C, and this is D. Links are like this. I have already set the next field of A as, as null. Now this is not C. C is this, P is this, and N is this. Now I again do what one thing that the next field of the sorry this is the current node. This is the current node and this is the previous node and this is the next node. Okay. Earlier current was this, next was this. So I'm just shifting everything. So P comes here, C comes here, and N comes here. So P comes at the A node, C comes at the second node and n comes to the this node. So what I'm doing going to do, the next field of c is set as this one. Okay. After this, again I'm incrementing this. p comes here, c comes here, and n comes here. Fine. Now once again, what we're going to do, we're going to set the next field of c to point to the previous node. Okay. Once this is done, I'm again incrementing this. P comes here, and then C comes here, and then N becomes null. Okay. So what you're going to do? You're going to point to the next field of C to point at P node. Okay. Now once this operation is done, what you see here that uh, after this you will have to increment this p to come here and c becomes null after this. Now once this operation is done, what you will do, you will point the start to point at this node. Okay, so how will that be done? You will set start is equals to p. So this operation continues until the time c is not null. Okay, the moment C becomes null, we will stop our operation. 
So what we have actually done in this reversal process, the start is given to us. We have taken P as a previous node, which is null. We have taken C as a current node, which is at the start initially. Okay. If you see that there is, uh, in case there is Let's take a, okay fine, let's take a n as the start dot next. Now, you are going to do this operation, by the time c is not null, the current node is not null. Okay, by the time the current node is not null, you will keep doing this. So what you have done, you have actually set the next field of c to point to p next field of c node is containing the address p after this operation you are going to shift p c and n all these so p comes at the place where c is p comes at the place where c is c comes at the place where n is and n is incremented by 1 or not incremented by 1 but in fact n is directed to point to the next node n equals to n dot next okay so c dot next equals to p it means if this is c c dot next equals to p if this is c c dot next equals to p so p is point directed to point to the place where c was c is here so p comes here c becomes n it means this is the n and c comes here and n is directed to point to the next node by this so when if this loop will finish when c becomes null we are done with the reversal process the only thing we, requ we require to do is that start is equals to p if p is here c has become null so start needs to come to the last node so start will come here so this is how the reversal can be done yes there is one thing that you should take care of when to do this operation. See, uh, let us suppose that C is here, P is here, and N has already become null. In that case, you need to, you are doing this operation, C dot next equals to P, it is done p equals to c, p comes here where c was, then c equals to n, okay fine, c, n was null, c has also become null. Now when you are doing n equals to n dot next, meaning of this is that you are referring to this n which is null and the next field of this null. So next field of null does not mean anything, so this is erroneous condition. So it means before this you need to apply the condition, okay, if n is not null, then only you are doing n equals to n dot next. In case n has already become null, you do not need to do this. Okay, so this is conditional. n equals to n dot next is conditional. So this is the algorithm for reversal of the linked list. Thank you.